A jury in Tarrant County took just a couple of hours to convict a former Los Angeles Angels employee for giving Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs the pills that killed him in a South Lake hotel room in 2019. The Angels were in North Texas June 30th of that year on a road trip to play the Rangers. The team's now former communications director, Eric Kay, answered a text from Skaggs to come up to his room with pills. The next day, Skaggs was found dead and an autopsy showed he had fentanyl in his system. Fox 4's Macy Jenkins is live in Fort Worth with reaction. Macy. Hi, Heather. Yes, as you said, it was a quick a quick verdict. The jury only took two hours to come up with their decision. Eric Kay now faces between 20 years up to life behind bars in a federal institution. Uh, moments after the verdict was read, Kay took off his belt, took off his tie, removed his wallet, and handed them over to family members. He was taken into custody, where he will likely stay until his sentencing hearing this coming June. Former Los Angeles Angels communication director Eric Kay walked arm in arm with loved ones Thursday afternoon as he returned to a federal courtroom in Fort Worth to hear the jury's verdict. Deliberations began Thursday after the prosecution and defense made their closing arguments. Kay's lawyers presented a last ditch effort to blame Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs' 2019 overdose death on Skaggs himself rather than Kay. But it didn't work. By mid afternoon, the federal jury found Kay guilty on both counts of possession of fentanyl and distribution of a controlled substance, resulting in death. His defense attorney, Reagan Wynn, spoke briefly to Fox 4 after the verdict was read. We're obviously disappointed in the verdict. We thought there were many reasons to doubt the government's case. Eight major league players took the stand during the trial, five admitting they got pills from Kay, referring to him as the go to guy for pain pills. The defense tried to sow doubt that Kay was the only person at blame, stating Skaggs had other drug sources. Paul Coggins is a former federal prosecutor who is not a part of the case. He says in the end, the prosecution's case was stronger. I think, like I said, the prosecution was able to show sort of a pattern here. There was a pattern of dealing. There were a pattern of transactions, and this just fell in that pattern. I asked Coggins if he could pinpoint where the defense went wrong. I think you have to start by, you know, the realization that the defense didn't have a lot of great cards to play, but they weren't able to overcome the fact that Kay was the go-to provider for the team. He's not surprised Kay didn't testify and says if he had, it would have been a Hail Mary for the defense. I know the prosecutor pretty well, and my guess is that uh, uh, Lindsey Barron would have probably Beating the, pin, beating the defendant like a pinata on the stand. Skaggs family crying and hugging in the courtroom after the verdict was read. They left the courthouse without speaking to reporters. This is a tragedy all the way around. You know, Eric Kay is getting ready to do minimum 20 years in the federal penitentiary and it goes up from there and Tyler Skaggs is gone. In a statement, Angels President John Carpino says the player's testimony was incredibly difficult for our organization to hear, and it is a reminder that too often drug use and addiction are hidden away. Months after Skaggs died, Major League Baseball announced mandatory drug tests for opioids and cocaine. It's unclear how this trial may impact the league moving forward. I don't know if it'll have a long-term impact, but you saw that it had an impact on the lives of some of those teammates. The Skaggs family released a statement uh, expressing relief over the verdict, though they say they continue to grieve. The family attorney adds they look forward to the upcoming civil cases against the Angels, filed against the Angels, and holding the team accountable. Again, Kay's conviction carries a minimum sentence of 20 years, but he could face up to life in prison. His sentencing hearing is set for June 28th. Heather and Steve, I'll send it back to you.